Hello and welcome to worship from St. Andrew Lutheran Church on Shawnee and Osage land in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, a member congregation of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. I'm Chris Atwood, the Director of Faith Formation here at the church. I'm so happy that you could join us for this, the fifth Sunday of Lent. This week, we hear a new covenant to come from the prophet Jeremiah and Christ talk about his soon-to-come death. And resurrection. Let us quiet our hearts and still our minds as we prepare for worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the Spirit, that we may go in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, your sins are forgiven, and God remembers them no more. You are freed in Christ to follow in the way of Jesus. Amen. As the sun with longer journey melts the winter snow and ice, with its slowly growing radiance warms us here beneath the earth. May the sun of Christ's uprising gently bring our hearts to life. Through the days of waiting, watching in the desert of our sin, searching on the far horizon for a sign of cloud or wind. We await the healing waters of our Savior's victory. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, with steadfast love you draw us to yourself, and in mercy you receive our prayers. Strengthen us to bring forth the fruits of the Spirit, that through life and death we may live in your Son, Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another, or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
side when you speak and write in your judgment. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Indeed, you delight in truth deep within me and would have me no wisdom deep within. Remove my sins with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be pure. The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, the hour has come for the Son of Humanity to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We've come so far through this journey of Lent together. We're so close to Holy Week and Easter. We have one more covenant we're going to talk about. And this covenant, well, do we remember what a covenant is? It's a promise between God and God's people. And God's people aren't just the folks in the Bible that we hear and read about. They are you and me and everybody else in the world today. And this prophet comes from the book of Jeremiah. Now, Jeremiah was a prophet. So I want to tell you what a prophet is, because, you know, a lot of times when we hear the word prophet today, it talks about money and how much money we make. And that isn't what a prophet was back then. A prophet was a person who delivered a message for God. And they delivered lots of messages over the time of their lives. So Jeremiah was delivering a message on the behalf of God to God's people. and. The covenant that Jeremiah delivered is that one day everyone would know God in their heart, in their mind, and God would be on their tongues and lips. 
And it wouldn't be like the old covenants that, let's face it, the Israelites didn't keep very well. And we still don't keep very well today. You know, we're not so good at holding up our end of the covenant sometimes. But God still loves and forgives us. But God said, one day, I will make a covenant with you that you'll be able to keep because everyone will know who God is. Well, that's really exciting because I know that I'm not the best at keeping God's covenants all the time, especially those Ten Commandments. Sometimes I have a really hard time with that covenant. And I bet you do too. And it's okay because God still loves and forgives us. And God has promised us that one day we will all truly know God in our hearts and in our minds. And I'm really excited for that day to come. And I hope you are too. Amen. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with this We wish to see Jesus. I'm not sure we could find a better or simpler way to summarize the many and varied yearnings and seekings of our Christian faith than this line from today's Gospel. In John, seeing implies much more than its literal meaning. Seeing is coming to know Jesus and understand who he is. It is believing and trusting in the intimate relationship Jesus shares with God, who he calls Father. Recognizing Jesus' presence among us, sensing and trusting that God is at work in our lives and in this world, working toward healing and life, knowing the love shared between God and Jesus, experiencing the gift of this relationship in community, I'm not sure what more I or we could ask for from God. We wish to see Jesus. These are the words of a group that comes from Greece to Jerusalem for the religious festival as today's reading begins. In the previous scene, Jesus entered the city in triumph. He was greeted by crowds waving palm branches and shouting, Hosanna, Savior, rescue us. Such a spectacle surely drew attention, and now the Greeks come to Jesus' disciples to see if they can learn more. Their country of origin is likely mentioned in order to represent the nations, the Gentiles, the non-Jewish world. Their seeking is the fulfillment of what Jesus' opponents had just observed with a degree of overstatement after his triumphal entry. Look, they say, the whole world has gone after him. We don't know if these seekers ever get to see Jesus, but their inquiry prompts Jesus to teach. Thus far in his ministry, Jesus has developed such a huge following, partly based on his signs, the miracles he has performed. But as great as these acts are, they will not be the means of his glorification. Jesus speaks instead of what lies ahead, using the image of a grain of wheat that falls to the earth and dies. Jesus' path will lead to death on the cross. While John's theology sees the cross partially as Jesus' moment of glorification, along with his resurrection and ascension, the cross is not the end of the story. Like the grain that falls and dies, Jesus' death will bear much fruit. 
The resurrection and ascension that follow the crucifixion are the source of new life for God's people. That fruit of new life is experienced in relationship, in relationship with God and among the community of faith, because relationship is at the heart of everything for John. The relationship between God and Jesus is the key to seeing and understanding his mission and what God is all about. That mission leads to the cross, and those who would have a relationship with Jesus are called to follow him there. This is not blind following to death, but a willingness to share in a way of self-giving love. Dr. Mary Hinkle Shore describes how the word hate in John often means reject and is used to describe the larger world's response to Jesus and his disciples. So, Shore writes, when Jesus says those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life, he is encouraging others to follow his lead in rejecting the world's definition of life as a small and isolated existence. He will not, and his followers should not, grasp and hold the seed and thereby fail to bear much fruit. The world is still the world, and much of it teaches us to cling to that seed for dear life. We are urged over and over to do all that we can to preserve that seed and to make it flourish by any means necessary, even at the expense of other seeds and the fruit that could result. Jesus boldly rejects this mentality. He is unwilling to pray that God would save him from the hour to come, the suffering, the death on the cross, but he asks instead that God would be glorified through what comes. John says that Jesus receives confirmation right then and there in the moment that God's plan is and will be fulfilled, and God will be glorified in that hour. The call to follow Jesus is not lightly or easily undertaken. There are reasons the world isn't eager and showing up to do so. The path of discipleship leads to the cross and it leads to death, at least dying to the values and ways that the world insists on, those things that falsely promise us a secure life when often only leading to much more suffering and death. In such a world, we wish to see Jesus. We wish to know and understand Jesus, to recognize that he is with us and among us. And so Jesus calls us to be in relationship with God and with one another and to serve God and one another in the context of community. Loving and caring for one another, humbly serving as Jesus served, among people who are all struggling, all in need of healing like ourselves, is incredibly challenging work. The way of self-giving and love is the way of the cross. But this is where we see and experience Jesus most fully. And Jesus assures us that even in the cross there is promise, and much fruit will be born. Those who follow and serve will be with Jesus and be honored by God. They will share in the same relationship of love and communion that Jesus has with his Father. They, along with all the world and us, drawn together by Jesus as he says, will receive the gift of new life in community, the community that is gathered around that cross.
Relying on the mercy and promises of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. You wash us through and through, and remember our sin no more. Make your church a community of forgiveness throughout the world, and a sanctuary for all. Give your people courage to forgive and the grace to love unconditionally. Through them, show the world new possibilities. Bless ministries of repentance and reconciliation, and guide them with your shepherd's staff. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You fill the earth, from tiny grains of wheat to the mighty thunder, with your presence, and you call us to attend to your will for all creation. Help us to remember our call in being one with your design and to respect and nurture. Grant weather that prepares the soil for seeds and protect all from violent storms, flooding, and wildfire fires. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You promise to write your law on our hearts, to keep our minds trained in care. Guide citizens throughout the world to shape communities that reflect your mercy, your justice, and peace, and give them creativity to work for the welfare of all your people. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Restore the joy of all who need to know your presence. Those who are lonely or feel unloved or unforgivable, those who need healing of mind or body, those who are dying and all who grieve. We pray for Pastor Deb, Bonnie and Bruce, Kitty, Amy, Karen, Rachel, Tommy, Cindy, Beth, John, Alan, and all whom we name before you now, aloud or in our hearts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Jesus calls us to follow him in life and death. Empower this congregation in discipleship to study and follow your way in our daily lives. Equip children and teachers in all, in all our learning ministries. Give us your truth and wisdom and teach us to walk with Jesus. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In the cross of Christ, your name is glorified. We praise you for those who have given us words to worship you, including Pastor Bruce, Brenda, Eileen, and Elaine. With all those who have died in Christ, bring us into life everlasting. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gathered as one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. 
You are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you, that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. Go in peace. Remember the poor. Thanks be to God.